All right, hello everyone. Amanda here with Eclectic Scribbles. I am back to you today with a brand new video. Today's video is going to be an October plan with me. I say an October plan with me because there are actually going to be two October plan with me this month. I will do the regular October plan with me with sticker kit and all of the goodies that come out this week for the October kit later this week or next week but today's plan with me is going to be a little bit special i love october i love halloween and i love everything about this season of fall and we are going to sort of jump in here and go super extra with my layout for the coming month and for october so those of you who followed the vlog, you will know that over the past month or so, we have been playing around again with gelatos and coloring in the backgrounds of the pages and things like that. And that is what I am doing for my cover page, which I haven't included in a while, but I really wanted to do for October and my monthly page and the rest of the pages for the month. So slightly different. Uh, there was some trial and some error in this and I'm having to mask out certain shapes to make sure that I can get color down where it's supposed to be and I'll sort of walk you through all of that during the time lapse and after. But without any further ado, first things first, we're going to get started. We're going to jump in here. We're going to do our cover page for October and I will let you know all of the changes that I have coming up for the month of October in this plan with me. It's going to be a little bit of a long one probably because there's a lot of extra in here, but I'm so happy and I, I'm so anxious to get started. All right, so I love this. So if you love Halloween, stick around and I hope that you find this entertaining. All right, y'all, so we're gonna get started here, and the first thing that you're gonna see me do uh, for this cover page is mask out the different shapes that I want to hide right now from the background. I am just, I just cut out some shapes off some paper. I am using uh, gelatos to do the background with a bunch of daubers, which you're gonna see here, and to hold the shapes in place right now, I'm using a removable adhesive from Tombow. I will list all of the colors and all of the supplies that I use throughout the course of this video in the description box below. So very quickly, basically what I'm doing here is using the gelato and the daubers to create a different sort of colored background. This is going to be the sky for this particular cover page. So I wanted it to be sort of a purpley night sky and so this is me going around the edges. Now just in case I go over and I didn't want to mark the pages in front or behind me so I just cut a piece of regular printer paper in half and that's what I've stuck behind these pages to catch anything that goes over the edges. I'm using purples, pinks, a couple of metallics, and a couple of blacks. Uh, this is me pulling off the washi tape because that was starting to make an impression on this page. So I had started marking out a couple of other things that I wanted to try, but I'll put that washi tape back later. So the next thing that you're going to see me do is go in over top of the purples with grays, blacks, and something called black hole out of the iridescent package uh, because it's a little darker and a little less yellow it's a little it's got a more of a pearl to it than anything else so this is me turning this purple sky into a purple night sky
All right, so once I got to a place where I was happy with the darkness of the sky, you saw me remove the masks. And now what I'm going to go in and do is take the negative of the shapes that I masked out and add the mask to the sky portion so that I can not really go over the lines with the ground that I am going in with the greens now. I thought that this would be the best option for this but it turns out it left a little bit of an outline and you'll see which I don't mind in this piece but I didn't use this technique again in the monthly cover page for the ground itself I just went in and sort of let the colors blend together this is going to give me more of a hard line so if you're thinking about doing something to recreate this then you might want to keep that in mind and once I get done with the colors of green in the ground ground I will definitely be going in and blacking that into because it is supposed to be a night scene so I'm going to go in with those same blacks and even the black hole iridescent one just to give it the same sort of look as the night sky and then I'm going to go in and do the moon in blues I'm also going to use the negative from the circle that I cut out to do the moon to block off that moon shape so that I don't enter into the purples as well again I probably would not do that again but this sort of page was trial and error I just sort of kind of went in and threw it all together I didn't know if this was going to really work out or not so this is my first attempt of making a scene and doing it like this with the gelatos you can see me trying to fix it a little bit here and blend those things back together but it's still going to show a hard line I'm putting the adhesive on the outside of this and I've reinforced the edges of this since I cut it really really thin up against the circle with washi tape so that's all the red tape is and I left the ground back on here again so that I could mask out the green from the blue as well. I also had a sort of stencil of the house that I'm going to put in here, but I forgot to mask it out. So again, I was just going in with no plan. So I'm using a combination of blues, blue greens, and things like that. But again, all of the colors are going to be listed by shade in the description box i'll list all of the purples and all the blacks all the greens and things like that in order in the description if you're wondering which colors exactly i used Alright, so now I'm removing all of the masks that I had down. So I've got my ground in place, my blue moon, and my dark purple sky. I'm just sort of going over the top with a little bit of gelato again just to blend in that outline a little bit. And now I'm putting the mask down for the house that I should have put down beforehand. So since I didn't mask this shape out, I'm just roughly and very lightly outlining the stencil itself and going in with a very very bright yellow and trying to get all the little windows colored in so they'll look lit up when the house is done. Now that the windows are done, it's time to draw in the house itself. I'm just basically cleaning up my workspace at this point and I'm pulling out the mask I would have used originally while I was doing the blue of the moon and sort of playing with ideas for how I wanted this house to look. So I'm going to use that as a guide and I'm going to draw the house in with uh, Tombow. And this is a Tombow mono drawing pen. This is the 05 I believe I wanted nice thick lines for it the house itself is not going to be overly colored in I want a very sketchy feel for it I want it to sort of look spooky so I'm not going to overly blend the colors I don't want it to bleed through to the other side I was very 
conscious of whether or not these were bleeding through to the other side when I get to shading in the house itself. But I am using a variation of widths here. So this is the O3 that I'm going in and outlining the windows. And I'm going to th throw a couple of details in with the O1 as well. So those are the three sizes of the mono drawing pen. And I sort of utilized each and every one for drawing out this and giving it just a little bit of detail. So hopefully you'll see that when it comes through. All right, so we're gonna go in with the gray now, and I'm doing the shutters in light grays. I'm sort of going back and forth, working from light to dark in some areas and dark to light in others. But basically, the coloring of the house is really sketchy, not overly blended. Um, and I wanted each section of the house to sort of be visible, so I'm trying to make those pop off of each other uh, when all is said and done. All right, the final touches on the house are gonna be me going in with the black and just giving a little extra definition to some of the house corners, a little depth to the porch area and the bottom of the house, adding in a little extra shadow, blending those things out, and that is going to pretty much do it for the coloring in and shading of the house. So we're moving on to trees. Trees are very, very simple, especially dead trees. So it is an assortment of squiggly lines, basically, for me. So for this last tree in here, I wanted something with a little bit more character. So I've got one that's sort of broken in half on this right hand side. And then I'm just going to go in and add a few more little details with my grays again, like a couple of tombstones and color those in just a little bit so they're faint and highlight them with my white jelly roll. I'm also adding some highlights to the trees so that they have a little bit of depth. Now you'll see me sort of throw down a little bit of gelato on one of my scrap pieces of paper and I'm just testing out these metallic brush pens from Kelly Creates to see which one I want over top of the ground so that I can write in October for the month. And lastly, I'm going in with a couple of pens and adding a few little extra details. I put a little bird up on the house. I put some bats in to give the sky a little bit more depth to it as well. Just one on each side and then a little one will form up in the right hand as well. And I put a bird also on one of the tombstones and then gave the tops of the house just a little bit of extra in interest as well. I'm highlighting these also with the white jelly roll just to give them some eyeballs and a little, very, very little bit of detail.
And that will pretty much wrap up this October cover page. I'm really, really happy with the way that this came out. Last but not least, I'm just going to go in and try to give the October a little bit of highlight and a little bit of depth with uh, the Jelly Roll and then with the Gray Tombow. It's just one of the darker grays. Alright, next we are going to move over to my October monthly page. I'm going to pull all my supplies back out. I'm using the exact same supplies on this page that I did on the cover page. So I'm just organizing that and getting them ready to go. I have already masked out all of my shapes for this. So you'll see those start to appear. I didn't like where I had the calendar place. So I could put the letters of the days of the week up at the top. So I'm just moving that down a little bit. And then continuing to go in. Starting with the pink. Moving to purple. And making the night sky the same way that I did before. I've got a moon masked out. I've got some tombstones masked out and I've got the calendar masked out I've also got a little pumpkin down in the bottom left hand corner masked out as well so those are going to be the shapes that I am avoiding at the moment and you'll see that this time instead of masking out the ground I'm just sort of going in with the green and I'm mixing it up I'm going to go ahead and put that in so I know where I want that to sit and I will sort of block in the darker colors as I go so for this one it worked out a little bit better. It's uh, definitely a little bit easier when you just sort of go for it. And I'm just building light to dark again. Alright, so once I have everything the way I want it there, I'm going to take the mask off for the moon and mask it out the same way I did in the previous page and go in with yellows and blues time to give it a slightly different look from the one before. And if you'll notice underneath the moon, there's just a section that's kind of blank. I knew that I was going to be drawing another tree in here to give it a little bit of a cohesive feel from the previous page. And so being as though I know the marker is going to be there, I didn't overly concern myself with filling that in with color as well. I went in with this white lunar color because it has a little bit of a pearl effect to it. It's really hard to see on camera though. So while you might not notice any different when, difference when you turn the page, it sort of gives it a little bit of a glow. It didn't do a whole lot though and so it probably isn't overly worth your time when you're using gelatos in this manner. Alright, our next step is to peel off all of the different masks and this is a very, very satisfying part of this process. 
So now I'm just going in with my Tombow Mono again and drawing out the shapes and the outlines for the different pieces to this scene. come in with my ruler, a couple Kelly Creates pins for the letters on top, and my Tombow Monos to draw in the actual calendar for the month of October. And these boxes are going to be three wide and five tall. And then I'm going to use a medium Kelly Creates brush pen to write the first initial of each day of the week. I'm not going with straight lines. They're all a little crooked and they definitely bleed over into the sky but that was sort of the look that I was trying to achieve and I'm going in with a little bitty blending t utensil so that I can get that little bit of color from the sky in behind that tombstone and in around the crow's feet and now I'm going to begin coloring things in this jack-o-lantern pumpkin whatever you want to call him went wildly all course when I get to the orange but by the time all is said and done I'm okay with the way that he ended up coming out I went to throw a little bit of extra shadow into him and sort of didn't like the way I had initially laid down the color so you'll see me go back and touch him up several times but I didn't want to do too much at once so I bled through to the back side of my cover page Again, with the tombstones, we're going in very, very sketchy, not overly blending anything. I definitely don't want to bleed through the paper, and I want that cohesive look from the house on the previous page to the tombstones in this. And I think it gives them a slightly spookier feel. Alright, and now we're going to go back in with the browns and start our squiggly line process all over again. So I'm sort of going in with a dark brown and doing the outline of the main limbs of the tree itself. And then you'll sort of see me come in light to dark again. So I wanted a little bit of depth to the tree and I wanted it to have that same sketchy feel. So I'm not overly blending any of these colors and I'm not worrying too too much about any kind of bleed through happening here so I'm just trying to go in lightest brown to darkest brown and give each of these branches a little bit of depth like the light is hitting it from the moon behind it. And as I come down onto the front of the tree, I'm going to give it a little bit of depth too. But this will have a definitely sketchy look and not an overly, overly blended look to it. But I really like the way that it kind of came out in the end. And finally, you'll see me tweaking the pumpkin down here at the bottom of the tree again and giving it more shadow and trying to pull that orange 
barely through it. Like his face is shaded in and you shouldn't see a lot of the orange. And then I will highlight it and the bird with a white jelly roll to give them a little bit of depth and the bird and eye. So that will give them just a little bit more definition. I'm going in with the lightest yellow that I could find. I will have that listed in the description box below to do the days and it's a little blown out in this but I just numbered each of the days in big letters 1 to 31 and I initially went in with the N65 for that first day to do a little bit of a shadow on the numbers but it was a little too bold for me and so I went in with the N75 for the rest of the numbers and it you can see it a little bit better in person it's not showing up completely on camera but given that drop shadow gave the numbers a little extra definition and finally for this scene before I give a little bit of highlight to the different elements you're gonna see me kind of come in and I've got to have a zombie hand coming out of one of the graves and I'll highlight it and then put grass and little spiky elements around it and the rest of the ground so that it gives the ground a little texture and a little definition and makes the actual elements seem like they're sitting on something and not just floating on top of a green mass. Finally for this scene, I chose to use the green Kelly Creates pen this time to go over top of the tree and write in October to title the month. And I went in and did some shadows with the grays again and used my jelly roll to put a few little highlights in. Moving on to the next page, I am doing my words of the day spread as I have been for the last couple of months instead of a gratitude spread. And for these pages, I definitely went a lot simpler as far as design is concerned because I need a lot of open space. So I just used the gelatos around the edges of each of the next several pages for my monthly setup and went in with Tombows and Kelly Creates pins in a sort of variation for the October monthly title of each of these following pages. I'm also using some stickers for the following pages and I am going in with a previous set of stickers before, not the October kit since I'll be doing a separate plan with me video using my actual October sticker kit later in this month. So I thought the gargoyles that I used when we did the sort of mystical month would go perfectly with this sort of Halloween creepy sort of theme. So I will add each of my gargoyles to either side of this spread to sort of round it out. And of course you get to watch me struggle pulling the stickers apart. Up next is my mood tracker for the month. I haven't decided what colors I'm gonna use for my specific moods or even what medium I'm gonna be using because while they are not part of the actual October monthly kit, I am going in and using my mood spooks for the month of October to decorate this page. And I'm thinking I may go in with colored pencil to color each one of these in 
for the days. You'll see me doing the header here. So it says Mood Spooks and the month is October. I used a Kelly Create small brush pen for that. I'm filling in all of my normal monthly moods over here on the left hand side and as usual I will be leaving the bottom half of the left hand page mostly blank so that I can take a monthly mood quote from one of your suggestions in the comments below as to what quote you would like to see there. So let's get something spooky and moody going for the quote here on October. I will choose one of them out of the comments and letter that in before October gets here. And this is me placing all of my mood spook stickers, all these fun little ghosts on to my page. And then I will go in and number each one of them one to 31 starting with the one that ends up as the last little ghost on the left hand side of the page that will round out this page and then we will move into the next one. So next up, we're gonna do the outline here again. I'm just using the same colors over and over for the rest of these pages. I'm using an orange, a yellow, a green, and a purple to do the edges and just sort of going in randomly around the outside of the pages for it. All right, so this is my habit tracker page. <laughs> and this was a hot mess from get go. I had no idea what I wanted to do to make this habit tracker spread over two pages. So I'm numbering 31 down to one on the left hand side and I figured I would use some of the creatures that I created for this month on the Halloween creature feature sticker sheets and um, I would give each one of them a specific habit and see which one sort of ended up winning at the end of the month and see how many I could sort of fill in by the time the month was over. But um, I was having some issues with my spacing amongst other things. So you could just sit back and giggle and watch me struggle with the sticker placement. So once I finally got the stickers in place, I needed a little extra. So that's why my little fairy friend is down there at the end, uh, just hanging out with the other creatures. I am using the Tombow Twin Tone in purple and green to line out each one of the spaces for the habits. So the one through 31 will be sort of filled in probably with little hash marks for each one of the little characters. And then I will go back in and label each one of these later. So I'm just adding a little bit of a drop shadow with my N75 gray so that it's not overpowering the little boxes. The trick to this is really to move your body, not your arm. So if you want a straight line, go slow and move your body. All right, so then we are now moving on to the last monthly spread that I have for now, and that's gonna be a combination of my self-care tracker and my intentions tracker for this month. So again, with the same thing for the outside of the page here, and then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do the headers.
for both of these, I am also using stickers. I am using my basic 31 day circle tracker for my self care. And then I am using the fun new circle tracker for the intentions. And I will sort of give you a rundown of how I have it laid out. All right, so there are four main sections, two dailies, one weekly and one twice a week section in this tracker. So for my daily task, I will fill in a box each and every day that I complete one of those. For the weekly things, I have up to five weekly boxes to shade in when I've done a task for that week. I have another section of dailies on the other side and then I have a section for things that I do twice a month uh, so that there are up to 10 boxes and I'll gray out the boxes that I don't need for this particular month. I'm going to be doing a full video on this circle tracker in a lot more detail and a lot more depth. If you're interested in that, that will be coming up in the next week or so. And finally, for this setup, I'm going to go back real quick and I'm going to put in all of the habits that I will be tracking for the month of October. They're pretty much the same habits that I always track. There's just a couple of minor tweaks to the habits themselves. I have combined a couple and then I'm adding a goal up at the top of journaling every day and using one of my habit tracker stickers from my shop to throw that in real quick because I have been terrible at that for the past several months. So I'm trying my best to get back into journaling and this is going to be my way of doing it. And I put a fun little cat up there to sort of really call attention to it and mark that thing in so I can really think about doing that each and every day and I'm graying out the little stars at the end of the month that I will not need. All right, so to round out the collection, here we have the October cover page with the spooky house on the front. And then that's gonna be followed up with our monthly calendar page. I don't use my calendar a whole lot, so it's okay that these are only three by five boxes. And then we're gonna move over into my words of the day spread with these cute little gargoyles from my shop. Followed by our mood spook page. This is my mood tracker for the month of October. And I will color each of those ghosts in as the days go by. And then habits. Self-care and intention. All right, that wraps it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed the voiceover. This is the first one I've done. Let me know if you prefer this to just wrapping things up at the end. And I will have another plan with me video using the sticker kit next week. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a big thumbs up if you find it at all helpful. Until next time, happy journaling, everyone.